Greetings everybody, welcome to Tokyo. And you see that in the distance on the left side of your screen, Tokyo Tower. And the city is pronounced Tokyo, two syllables, not Tokyo. I say Tokyo quite often, but Japanese people sometimes correct me and they say Tokyo is how you pronounce the city. So that's Tokyo Tower. It's really nice from this point of view. This is um, an intersection that I like to come to. It's a secret place that you see maybe Tokyo Tower the best, especially at night in about three hours when the sun sets and the lights come on. It really is stunning because you see the city lights reflecting left and right and then Tokyo Tower in the center of your screen really is a centerpiece of the city. That's right, this is Tamachi. Also, not too far away is Mita Station. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty place. Keio University is not too far away as well. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to Tokyo on a freaking hot day. Ah, it's already June. What is it, 15th? And it feels like the middle of the summer. The sun is hot, the humidity is high. We're in the rainy season, but that doesn't mean it rains every single day. I wanted to bring you to this area because uh, uh, there's a lot of construction going on, on nearby. This shows you that Tokyo is still expanding. They're tearing down a lot of buildings that were a little bit older and uh, they're putting up new buildings. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, right above me where I was, and it, I'm on this side, I'm, I'm from this side of the, the uh, pedestrian bridge, the pedestrian crossing. They're putting up a new skyscraper right here. I don't, I think it was like an old 1950s building, 60s building that was there. And right behind it near Tamachi Station is another high rise apartment complex. But that complex is gonna have maybe the best view of the city. Not only is Tokyo Tower that way, not too far away, just over here is Rapungi and Shinjuku. The entire city of Tokyo is laid out in front of you. Um, we're going to be walking this way. And I wanted to show you just a new angle of Tokyo Tower. There you see the foot of it right there. If you were standing here in the 1950s, you would have seen Godzilla destroy it. And then a lot of really small ant looking people rebuild it quickly for the next movie. It's a true story, sort of. All right, let's get this episode moving. That's a pretty cool view though, right? If you like this view, click the thumbs up and I will, I will bring you some more original views from Tokyo. But just one more time, because this is the last time we're gonna be moving, we're gonna be here, moving on. That's the view, right? That's also could be a postcard club view for our, our Patreon supporters. That'd be pretty cool. At, you know what, I gotta come back at night when the lights come on, it's more stunning. Um, we did we did have uh, a lot of rain yesterday and uh, it's it's just going in like sunny rainy cloudy sunny rainy cloudy the mess the uh, temperature is changing quite a bit yeah I'll be putting my mask when I get down there there's really not a lot of people here but before I did this I was making uh, the announcement video for something coming up pretty soon <laughs> I can't tell you yet I can't tell you yet. All right, here's my bicycle. I'll be back. Stay right here. It's probably not the best place to park it. So this intersection, let's call it Fudo no Tsuji. All right. It, you can actually see it on Google Maps. And it's probably the best intersection. That's where I was up there on the corner here. If you go straight that way, it takes you to Shimbashi. We're gonna cross the street right now. Good morning. Do you want to know why this live stream started late? <laughs> the phone overheated. It's that hot now. So I'm hoping that the time it took to cool down will uh, help out and we won't have any overheating problems for a while. It's 
it's best if I stay in, uh, stay in the shadows here. So you're gonna walk for about five minutes and you're gonna see Tokyo Tower get a little bit closer, bigger, and then at the end of this street, it's so massive. It's, it's such a beautiful sight. Um, it's such a beautiful tower. I love the colors of it. Everything about Tokyo Tower because it symbolizes um, where Japan was at that time in the 1950s after World War II. This country in the Showa era had to really rebuild pretty quickly. And a lot of people didn't have a, much hope after the fire bombings of uh, 1945. Everything was destroyed after World War II for a very long time. The rubble was here all the way into the 60s. Um, I've seen pictures of the city. It just, it took a long time. But this was built in the mid 50s and it gave people a lot of hope. When you saw this amazing structure that resembles um, the Eiffel Tower made from human ingenuity back in the 19th century. I guess they kind of made it to look out like this. It was, the last time I checked, it might be shorter now, but it was 333 meters high. And uh, in our Discord server, I posted a video. This is where I first met Jennifer for an NHK Tokyo Eye episode we did on Tokyo Tower back in 2009, I believe it was. It was a different world back then. But that, the link is in, uh, in the Discord server. Somebody has, had posted that video on YouTube. Hey, Irvine's here. Get some Pocati sweat to hydrate. Thank you. I'll get us up at a vending machine up here. Let's see if we can get a. Let's see what we can find in on in route here. We'll look for a drink. It's really important to stay hydrated in, in Japanese summer. If you oh look, unadon. That looks really the best of both worlds. Unagi on the left. You don't on the right. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Thank you, lovely lady. That's the unagi lady. Oh man, what a hot day. Look at that ramen shop with the sign that looks like Mount Fuji. Tonkotsu ramen. Red Mount Fuji ready to explode in flavor. Hey everybody, we're walking towards Mount, uh, to Tokyo Tower, and I wanted to show you my favorite view of the city. There's a lot of students in this area. I believe Keio University is not too far away from here. But a lot of people do stay in the Tamachi Mita area. And this is a little walk you can do. Also, there's little uh, alleys that you can go to that have tons and tons of ramen shops. Do you see that? Loads of ramen shops. In fact, let's just go off road a little bit. I'm gonna take you down this road a bit. And then we're gonna reconnect with uh, the main street. Whoa. I love these little alleys. I'll be back here. Look at this old looking building here. It's not actually that old, but they've made, they've put uh, wood paneling around it to make it look like it's uh, from the Showa era. Back then, all the buildings were made out of wood. And then after World War II, they started making it into cement. You can, you could tell by looking at the buildings that the period based on the materials that they've used. At night, this place is pretty hopping, I think with uh, people drinking and, and eating some food here. Oh, you can get some businessmen probably stop there, get some socks for a thousand yen. Pretty cool, yakitori up there. Ikinari steak is everywhere. I met a, I met a um, oh, when I was doing an HK um, last year, there was a, um, what was it? Oh, the driver. Yeah, the driver had, was a gold card member of Ikinari steak. He goes there so often. I think he'd eaten like 500 steaks from there and he had a had proof. 
<laughs> That's a pretty big deal. Brad Fletcher's in the house. Grab a cold drink on me, John. Stay hydrated. You got it. Raymond said, tennis here. Something cool for your phone. I know the humidity there is punishing. It is. And imagine uh, Takubin, Kudoneko guys. They're wearing pants and um, hot shirts. A lot of respect to, to the delivery people because they still got to keep going. They, keep, they still got to move. All right, at the end of the street here, we're gonna hang a, hang a left and go back on up there and, and take a look at, at my favorite angle of, of Tokyo Tower. There's not a lot of people on this side alley. Whew. I wouldn't mind living around this area. I did put a new, a new emoji. Can you guys find it? If you are a uh, traveler. You have access to different emoji. I put a new one up the other day. <laughs> I think we're we're uh, ten. Oh, there it is. Glenn got it. Good job, Glenn. Denise writes in here. What's your favorite dish to eat in summer? I like so many, and kaki, uh, kaki gori, uh, kakiage. Yeah, kakiage is good too. Summer foods. You know, I really don't have anything. I like cold soba, and suke man, which I eat all the time. I don't have anything that's just summer. Maybe watermelon. I love Japanese watermelon. The fruits are really good in the summer. Peaches are amazing. Peach season is just starting. They're gonna see the Okayama white peaches really soon. So I believe that's Keio University's entrance right there. I believe I'm not a resident, a right, student from there. It's a pretty cool uh, looking campus. It's pretty cool, huh? Fungus, welcome to the Traveler Group. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. On Wednesday, I'm going to Yokohama to a mom and pop shop that has found a way to innovate in this economy and is staying afloat by changing their strategy. And it's gonna be a pretty good story uh, for the new channel that's coming up uh, probably uh, sometime next week, I'll upload it. I'll, it's gonna be a quick turnaround. I'm so stoked to, to finally have uh, videos coming again on, in an edited format. Welcome, Cite Noob World. You are now a member and have access to 20 very crazy emoji in there. Whoa, hey, hey guys, I found something. This is something. Fresh mango. What? I'm in on I'm in on this. This is flesh mango. And then mango smoothie. I just want to get mango tea. Oh, it's mango tea. I just want mango. All right, let's do this. I just want mango juice. Let's go and get it. Okay, cha. Um, mango juice, sir. Mango juice. スムージー。スムージーですよ。あ、じゃあ、ティーがいい。ティー、はい、サイズは。あ、エルサイズ。エルサイズ、はい。あの、ここにはエルサイズ。タピオカとピンクを入れていいですか。あ、何が?こちら
Alright. So I'm just gonna have to wait for my mango tea. I don't want tapioca in there because tapioca is like that's so 2019. Okay. Only Japan Go isn't doing his part to support the tapioca industry. I'm supporting the mango farmers. Tapioca farmers are doing just fine. Tapioca is so 2019. That's popular in 2005. I did not know that. Uh, all right, guys, so we're walking over towards that statue, which is a tower. It's called Tokyo Tower, and we're about halfway there. Maybe. Thanks so much uh, for the Super Chats and for the members joining in. Really appreciate it. Jim Jones, thank you so much. Welcome aboard. We've got, um, we got some new uh, emoji coming. I actually have a, uh, a new Toby the Crow one coming. Um, I think we need five more, five more members and we get another spot and I get a Toby the Crow uh, emoji coming, a new one. I, I think it's gonna be okay. Nosh, Nosh, and, Nosh and Hello Hi know what it is. Uh, let's see here. What is the, the best thing to do outside of Tokyo during summer? Go swim in the ocean? <laughs> I don't know. Um, pools are pretty cool, but not right now. Um, in the summer, I like to go to the mountains. Uh, Karuizawa is really nice. Uh, in Nagano, the mountains are a lot cooler than in Tokyo. Tokyo is so hot. Uh, with the asphalt and, and the, the streets just sucking in the, uh, the heat and releasing it, it's so hot in the city. I think today it's going to get around 33 degrees Celsius or creeping up to 90. I need, I need my tank top. Uh, to keep keep warm, uh, keep cooler. All right, we're almost there. We got uh, just like another another uh, another few hundred meters, and then we'll turn around. But Tokyo Tower, this is my favorite angle to see it. It's so beautiful from here. That's how you know you're in Tokyo. If you if you're walking down the street and you see Tokyo Tower, you know where you are. Sometimes it's hard to know that, but with a symbol like this, it's easy to feel that you're in Tokyo. And you guys are with me. This is what makes this channel so cool. Oh, they're making it. She put the tea in, now she's putting in the mango juice. Oh, awesome. I just wanted mango juice, but I'll take the tea. I do, Irvine, I do have another camera. It's in my backpack. I'm sweating like crazy. I, I'm actually here to film uh, an announcement video. So I was able to do that today. And then I said, why not go live and bring you an angle of Tokyo that is sort of unique. It is really hot. How you guys doing? Where are you watching from? Anybody from Antarctica? Sh share your, some of your cold with us. Some of your, some of that chill with us. Temperature is about 33 degrees Celsius. I'm not even sure what that is in Fahrenheit, like 80, 88 or something. It's pretty hot. Let's just say that that spring is gone officially. Hi. There's mango on the bottom. Don't sing. Okay. Oh, that's a tapioca straw. Oh. It's a tapioca straw. When I said, they, they asked me, do I want tapioca? And I said, no. They kind of looked like, what? Really? Why wouldn't you want tapioca? And I said, no. Oh, 
Oh, that's good. Thanks, guys. This is the best. This is be This might be a little bit better than a Pocati sweat, but this is a really good, really good gift. Thanks, guys. That's nice. All right, onwards we march towards Tokyo Tower. We go. We have another five minutes. Maybe I will get some ice cream. We'll see what we find on the way. But uh, in Japan, you shouldn't walk and drink. I'm aware of that. There are exceptions to the rule, like right now when you're dehydrated and you feel like you're in a desert and you need to drink something. Look at that road sign. That's awesome. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about when I say Tokyo is the hardest city in the world to navigate. It's pretty hard. Look at the roads. You don't know where you go, left, right, center. There's two different lefts and two different rights. Each one will take you to the, an entirely different area. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I drove through here in the, with a car um, a few days ago, uh, just, just on the other side of Tokyo Tower. All right, after we get past this tree, we should see a really nice view. Whoa, that is nice. This is the, um, we're getting closer to, um, we're leaving the, the Mita and, uh, what was it? <coughs> Tamachi area. And we're walking from there uh, over to Tokyo Tower, Shiba Park now. It's not too far away. Oh, there you guys go. There's a new, there's a three really good looking vending machines right here. One's Coca-Cola. The other one is uh, um, Suntory uh, Asahi on the left, I believe. Yeah. I saw this one was interesting. For the summer, they have sparkling Aquarius which is a, a new take on Aquarius, which is Gatorade in Japan. Japan doesn't have Gatorade, they have Aquarius, which is my birth sign. Everybody knows Aquarius is a pretty cool people. I try my best to live up to those standards. It's very hard, <laughs> but. I'm staying away from that bitter coffee, Marcus. We, me, me and that bitter coffee have, have tangoed. Both have left feet. It's really bad. Ah, I think there are coffee grinds in there. It's pretty good. I approve. Thanks always uh, for allowing us to walk vicariously in Tokyo through you. Not at all. Thank you so much for coming. I see that <laughs> Toby just attacked PVG in a emoji battle. Which season do you like the best? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. I, you know, part of me likes summer. I love sweating it out. I lose weight in the summer. The days are longer. All right, it's humid and hot, but you can you can dress down, wear shorts. It's a lot to like about summer, but it is it is it does suck the life out of you because it is so humid. Um, I think September, when the heat when the humidity breaks, but it's still warm, is so nice. And May, which we just went through, is is really really nice too. So May and September, the ends of the summer. Not a lot of people here. 
we're just going to be going up another another 150 meters and then after we go under the under underpass we're going to be uh surprised with an amazing view and then i gotta walk all the way back there to get my bike <laughs> but it's worth it it's nice um to get get a little bit of exercise i got so much editing to do the moment i get back i'm right at it again i shared on some people with the discord server and on twitch uh two days ago the music for the uh, new channel it's gonna be so amazing the music is is uh, really catchy it's got some shamisen rocking going on some fue flute the uh you see that right there wear your mask it's a good reminder in the mita area always have a mask even if uh you're not wearing it outside when it's sunny because uh uh, there's not really a risk of, of giving it to people outside when you're when you're social distancing more but when you go inside you want to have a mask and you want to be polite and and uh, if i walk into a shop or something put your mask on if you're around people put your mask on but i i want to stress this very very much it is so hot and so humid when you wear the mask it's very easy to overheat just make take care of yourself first okay i know we have to wear a mask also make sure that you don't overheat just have your mask with you and take breaks take it off be able to breathe mask sweat i know it's not it's not pretty let's take a look at the map maps a uh, good place to uh uh put uh, get your bearings here we started from over here uh and then we went past i guess this is where oh wow embassy of italy how cool is that there's Keio University back here. So a lot of this is uh, Mita High School. We walk past that. Now we're near Ak Ak Akabane Bashi. We go underneath the bridge and then Tokyo Tower is right here. Do you see Tokyo Tower? So we get an awesome view of, from this intersection. So let's go over to this, this intersection, go underneath this bridge and we're gonna get an Eiffel. Tokyo Fire Department. You guys are rocking that red. Anyone have a color picker? I wonder what, what the HTML color code is for fire engines. It's pretty cool. An Eiffel. Yeah, <laughs> did you guys get it? Did you get the pun? An Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. An Eiffel of Eiffel. Did anybody get that? No? Some people got it. I don't know. You have to you, you have to spend a lot of time with me to get my humor. It's a nice Mercedes. All right. On the other side of this bridge is a, is an Eiffel. By the way, there is a Tokyo Tower emoji. If you have an uh, iPhone or any of them, Japan makes most of the emojis, and there is a Tokyo Tower emoji in there. A lot of people don't know that that's Tokyo Tower. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, here we go. We go, we go underneath this bridge, and it's you're in Ak Akibanabashi. Akabanebashi. Tokyo Tower is massive. Whoa. That's what we were looking for. It's really, really pretty. If you walk straight this way, you'll get to Azaba Juban and eventually Rapungi uh, in this direction. You could walk this way and then go to Rapungi the other way. If you go this way, you, you'll eventually, uh, towards this way is uh, Shimbashi and Tokyo Station. But in front of us, needs no explanation, is the Volkswagen shop. <laughs> no, no, no. If you pan up, you'll see a beautiful Tokyo Tower. That international orange looking color. It's really nice. 
Brett Fletcher, my niece is very interested in Japanese culture, especially the food. What would be the best website to order snacks and drinks from? Amazon? You could do Amazon, or you could just do only in Japan Daimyo package on Patreon, or you could, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of these snack box people have been contacting me and said, could you do a video and, and highlight our snack boxes? But that's not really what I do. I don't know, um, but I think that there are dozens of these snack uh, where they send you packages from Japan. I will tell you this right now. The mail is not very good, all right? If I, I, the only way to send anything to the United States is by sea mail. And I've been sending sea mail packages that take between one to three months to arrive. So just keep that in mind when you decide to order something from Japan. If you're doing it to the United States, it's going to take one to three months. If you're doing it from Germany, it'll take less than a week. And I don't know why. DHL? Maybe. Yeah, somebody's waiting. <laughs> All right, so that was a pretty cool adventure. You see Tokyo Towers now in our rear view window, rear view mirror, and uh, the postcard from Andreas, hold a second. Your postcard took about three days to Germany. That's crazy, right? It took two months to get to the United States and it took three days to get to Germany. It's not, that's not right. That's not right at all. All right, if you like these walks with secret angles and secret views and, and um, courses that you probably should take when you come to visit Japan, in Tokyo. Give me a thumbs up, click click the like button so I know that you like this content. We only got 336 likes to this point, which shows me that you guys hate this content because there's a thousand people watching. Use the, it's a strong word, but it's a very peaceful time. Very quiet in Tokyo. Do you hear the bird chirping? Cobra Bebop, thank you always. Haircut's coming this week, guys. <laughs> I'm in dire need. I can't control the beast anymore. Kanai's got the clippers. She's been charging it. Maybe tonight? Let it grow. That would be pretty cool to let it grow. I don't think I can, I, I don't think I can do it. I can't pull off the, the long hair. I wish I could. I'm not, I, I'm not, I already have a mullet. Look, that's a mullet. It's like down, it's down past my neck, neck area that there's, there's a line on your neck that if it goes past that line, you officially have a mullet. I'm in mullet territory. I don't know if it's a full mullet, but it's a mullet, all right? I can do a ponytail, but it's it's not a big ponytail, but it's enough to have a ponytail. Therefore, it's a mullet. What's the big deal? Mullets aren't that bad, okay? I would just encourage you, if you decide that you want a mullet or you have a mullet, more respect to you. Don't do what, don't, you know, don't worry about what other people think. You enjoy your mullet. And I'm gonna enjoy mine for the next 12 to 24 hours because this mullet's gotta go, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to get rid of it. Chicago Africans here. How you doing? All right, guys. This is a pretty cool adventure. Uh, I highly recommend coming and taking some pictures around uh, in the winter, maybe around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the summer, around 7 o'clock, and get a really nice sunset view of Tokyo Tower as it lights up. And um, with the sun setting, you'll, you'll never get a better view of the city of Tokyo as an ambulance races somebody in. Yeah, it is a pretty good shot. Maybe I'll make this. I'm going, by the way, to Kanazawa next week. Uh, I was invited by Kanazawa City to, to go check that out, and I have some ideas of videos that I want to make there. So I'm going to see if I can get some permission to go behind the scenes in Kanazawa, go to some of the restaurants and, and areas there, and bring you a story or two. Um, so a big, big shout out to Kanazawa. Thanks so much for inviting me over there uh, to make some content. And uh, I'm taking you guys with me, of course. You're gonna get some live streams from Kanazawa. I haven't traveled that much since then, but hey, if the prefecture's, in, if, if the city's inviting you, 
that's that's a pass to go over there right so uh, it's nice it's nice that we can now travel around a little bit more freer if you're uh, living inside of Japan but we don't know when you're gonna be able to travel internationally to Japan Australia New Zealand Thailand Vietnam China seem to be the first countries that will be allowed access not in that order I'm not sure yet but it looks like in July we might be opening up if those people from those countries have what it, if they dare come here it might even be limited to 250 people per day which is really low what is that like mm, if, if it, an airplane carries 20 people there is like 12 air flights in or something but it's a step in the right direction it's a step in a direction to get the economy to get travel to get life back to normal just with a lot bigger precautions and um, tougher standards whether you uh, think that we, it's too early or not if countries have alleviate have uh, been uh, able to keep the infections at bay or, or have zero then connecting up with countries that are almost at zero too seems to make a lot of sense just to to get the economies going because a lot of people are hurting especially in the tourist industry they need it to come back a little bit and uh, we saw that when I went to Fujinomiya the other day and there's people they kept giving us discounts and we're like we'll, we'll pay full price because we want to support you guys <laughs> they're really really we're happy to see tourists so we're back why is the guy staring at the back people do that when you're talking if you're walking down the street and you're talking to a camera in your hand people look at you and they think you're funny but this guy's walking with a smartphone so he's doing the same thing except he's not holding a gimbal you know what I mean uh, Jaden Westhead's here Jaden how you doing hi John how are you I'm really looking forward to your trip to Kanazawa I would have been there last month ah oh, I will take you with me until you can make it there yourself Cobra Bebop will there be another daimyo slot available soon actually I have one daimyo package that I, I uh, wasn't able to send uh, send me a message later if you're interested I may be able to send that one to you uh, depending on where you are in the world uh, I want to be honest if it's going to the US it's gonna take a while to get there but in Europe it, it, it might be a lot faster S Spain Italy uh, some countries don't allow mail yet but many of them do Switzerland just opened up their international mail so they get airmail as well now I think on June 1st all right guys what an adventure nice day thanks so much for joining me on this walk a new angle of Tokyo Tower from Mita Tamachi area towards Ak Akabanebashi um, this street is is pretty cool there's some nice uh, restaurants in the alleys there's a ramen alley uh, not too far away from Tamachi and uh, yeah if you're if you're here you probably want to spend some time here and and maybe rent a bike you can ride around it's pretty comfortable Scott don't worry about the raccoon pelt mullet bro <laughs> looking good you can even get a ponytail Scott that's actually you know what I'm close to, to, to getting the ponytail there's this uncomfortable mid range between a, a short mullet and a long mullet I'm like in there and Jim Jones how's the economy in Japan at the moment in the UK we had a 20% drop in GDP in the month of April uh, Jim just just so you know Japan is in a recession it's three straight quarters of, of bad growth so Japan was the first and just uh, developed country to go into recession so we're we're kind of hurting right now a lot of people are hurting really badly here uh, it's gonna be my mission in, in the, the, this year to try to cover stories of small businesses and people who are doing their best to survive in this economy and I think that those stories will show you the soul the the heart of Japan by seeing how people are are innovating and evolving as the economy changes for the next decade it's pretty it's pretty interesting to see but it's also heartbreaking to see uh, especially older the older generation that have a harder time of changing but uh, on Wednesday I'm renting a car going to Yokohama to go and see uh, an, an older 
family business that has been able to do that. And it's going to be really exciting to see and tell you that story. And that's going to set the tone for the rest of this year where I want positive, inf positive and inspirational stories from Japan on how people are, are doing really well here, are, are working hard, um, but I hope inspires you something beyond just tourism, something that shows you the spirit of Japan um, through our small business owners here. Look at that. Oh, this is really cool. Look at the rope. Looks like it's made from tatami. You can walk through there and go up to this uh, temple. It's really nice. Johnny Boyka, can you please go to Shinjuku Nichome for Pride Month and live stream? When is that? Send me a message later. Uh, I'll, I'll go check it out. I missed it last year. Whoa. Now we're underneath the belly of, of uh, the university. Let's go just take a quick quick look at the Keio University Mita campus map. Pretty nice. It does look like an institution of finer learning. Not even Japan. It looks very European. Maybe New England looking. Keio University is one of the big, big five universities in Japan. Don't ask me what the other ones are. Let's see here. Meiji, Todai. Tokyo University is called Todai. Uh, maybe Kyoto University. I don't know. Osaka University maybe. Waseda University, but we all know that university nowadays are, are corporations and uh, you know what, I, I don't think that, I don't think that uh, where you went to school nowadays really makes a big difference. Whether it was community college or Harvard University, it all just depends on, on what kind of, of students you were, how hard you work, and what did you learn? I gotta tell you, Ohio State is where I became a man. <laughs> like, literally, it, it really was. I, stop laughing. It's a true story. Uh, I have been to Raybun a long time ago in 2003, but uh, I, I wanted to go there when I was hitchhiking before, but the ferries had stopped. You have to go in season. So I know I was before the ferries last time in 2017. So I'll, I'll try to go up there again. Right now, Hokkaido um, is one of the hotspots for the pandemic right now. So it's kind of been discouraged to go and travel up there. But I, I will, I think I'll be getting a chance to do that sometime during the summer. And uh, either I'll be, I'll fly up there and rent a car or I'll just drive up there, which is a very long drive. But thanks to my license that I got a couple of years ago, it opens me up to be able to, to now just drive and and uh, by driving, it, it, there's so many different stories that are off of the JR tracks that have something that you've never seen before. Driving is a completely different way to see this country. And I encourage you uh, maybe to first learn the rules of driving in Japan and after that to uh, get the courage to take a train out to the countryside then rent the car outside of the city so it uh, decreases your chance of of crashing because it's city driving in Tokyo is really hard. But if you take a train a little bit out of the way, pick up the car, um, it makes it a lot easier to return it. And uh, usually they'll give you a, a lift to the train station if you ask, or it's a short taxi ride. Renting a car is a way to see Japan from another angle because Japan, although they have amazing trains, let me tell you, they are a car culture here. Uh, there's no more quarantine. We're out of the state of emergency. We're in stage two, which will turn into stage three, which is the end where everything opens. But we had 47 people infected yesterday. And that means, uh, I don't know if there's an alert, but they found a couple of clusters where more than 15 people were infected. And it's, I guess it, it gives us a little bit of a pause that it's still out there as you see the students crossing the street. It's still out there and we have to uh, 
uh, still maintain our social distancing, wearing masks in crowded areas, uh, washing our hands, taking a shower when we get home, which you should do anyways. Take off your shoes when you, when you enter into your apartment. Things like this that we do normally in Japan. She should be doing that too. I'm so hot. All right, I'm, I'm on my way home, guys. Thanks so much uh, for joining me on this on this walk around town. I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna cut my hair tonight or tomorrow. It's gonna be really soon, but I'll try to give you a couple of hours heads up. If you are a member, I'll put it on here, uh, a notification, as well as on Patreon always, Twitter, Facebook, um, Discord, all those places we have uh, notification squads because we know that the that the YouTube uh, notifications aren't the best in the world. Actually, they kind of stink, but never mind that. There's other places where you can reach out and make sure you never miss a live stream because when we're live, anything can happen. Like a crow could swoop down and leave a big turd on the ground right in front of me or even on my hat. It's happened before. That guy used to be human. But the crows got him and then they put him in this window. Look at that. Could end up like him. Thanks everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night. I'll see you in the next live stream.